Hello and welcome back to the Scale Modelling Cafe. My name is Jamie and welcome to the next part in the Edward S199 build. And in this episode what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be doing the painting and the decals and getting ready for the weathering. So starting off with a primer coat. I don't always primer if I'm honest but I thought it wouldn't do any harm in this case. So it was out with the Mr. Surfacer 1500 and this is actually quite a thin mix and I'm just slowly misting it on because I want to get as smooth a coat as possible and you can see how shiny it is on the wing there. That will obviously flash off and dry back to more of a satin finish. So relatively high air pressure from what I normally use and I'm always keeping the airbrush moving. What I don't want to do is just hover for a little bit too long and then get some pooling or anything like that. So I'm always keeping the airbrush moving. Uh, I've got in relatively close here now and I've turned down the air pressure and I'm just freehand going around the wheel wells, which obviously we pre-painted. But if I get a little bit of overspray, overspray no drama, we can just go back in and, and touch that up. You'll also notice that the gun barrels under the wings have been masked off with liquid mask. That was Mr. Mr. Neo. And I'm going to treat those later. You can also see there, um, stuffed in the nose is a paintbrush. And uh, acts as convenient handle. And there we go, that's the primer coat all finished. So what I tend to do in between all paint coats is just polish the surface. I'm not polishing it to a high shine. I'm just giving it a gentle rub with a very fine sanding stick. This is from Flory Models, it's their, uh, it's their polisher. So I'm using the green side. And then all I'm doing is I'm just smoothing the paint. Now the paint coat, because I used Mr. Surfacer 1500 at quite a thin mix, is actually very smooth. And this probably wasn't necessary, but I thought I'd just go in anyway and just smooth it all down. And then just check in with my, uh, with my thumbs there. And now we're ready for the next stage. Which is, I'm gonna paint the white for the markings. So the rudder had a coat of white first. And then I just went in and did quite a large area actually where the uh, where the markings are going to go because these are going to be masked off with some custom masks from a friend of the channel, Nige. So MRP white, in fact all the paints on this model were MRP. Uh, that goes down really thin, really smooth and really opaque. And this will have a polish as well when I'm finished. And quite a large area on the rear fuselage as you can see and I'll do the top and bottoms as well. Now sometimes I'll actually apply the mask first, do a mist coat and then go back in but I didn't on this one. And then just using the tweezers we're gonna pick up the male uh, or female rather part of the mask and we're just gonna lay that on. Obviously quite a simple marking this, it's only two colours the white and the blue and by doing the white first as an undercoat I just find that easier if I'm honest now the numbering down the back was was done a little bit differently so I very carefully picked up the entire mask, the male and the female part. They will stick together. And now trying to lay it down without it sticking in the wrong place, which was quite tricky. So once it's in place, I just burnish it down there with my thumb. And then we're gonna slowly remove the female part of the mask this time. 
and as you can see the numbers stay behind but if they do come up with the female part of the mask then I'll just use the tweezers just to coax it into position and to leave the markings behind and that way you're going to get all exactly the right spacing and uh, and it's going to look neat and there is the mask in place just going to burst it down with my finger and that's all ready Okay, the tail stripes were done a little bit differently, so I measured them with my digital calipers and on my Infini cutting board thing, I cut the uh, cut the correct width and then did all three stripes and then as you can see there, just removed the middle stripe, which is going to be blue, leaving the white portion behind. Rudder now, so digital calipers measuring the decal, and that's 1.7 millimeters. So using the Infini cutting mat, I use the the border between the 0.8 and the 0.9, which is going to give you 1.7, the correct width. And then I'm just going to lay the stripe. So the first one was the white one, then the red, then the next white, and then I could remove the red portion, and I used that red portion all the way down as a spacer to get the correct space and then just a little triangle at the bottom for the uh, for the last bit and there we go there is the rudder all ready for the paint now for the base coat so MRP RLMO2 and olive drab and dark earth just to warm it up a bit and I actually added a bit of RLM 81 as well for a bit of green in there and now I'm just going to apply a nice solid opaque base coat so I'm being fairly careful and deliberate laying down this color as you can see fairly slow low air pressure quite close not too much paint coming out of the nozzle and I'm just going to slowly build up the uh, the opaque coat the reason for this is all that beautiful surface detail all that riveting I don't want to lose it by blasting on a big thick layer of paint now I guess the the actual camouflage color can be a little bit controversial on this. There is a fantastic article in the latest, that's the August 2022 issue of the Edward newsletter, in which case they've done their primary research and they've even got some color chips. And this color is not RLM 02, even though that does say that in the instructions. The colour actually is, uh, it's a Czech paint that was effectively their version of khaki. But it is very, very similar to RLM02. So fair enough, I'll give them that on the instructions. It is the closest colour. But I wanted to modify it a bit. The MRP RLM02 is, for my eye, a little bit too grey and cold in tone. Hence I added the, the other colours to get more of a, a colour approaching khaki and that's what I went for and in any case this base coat is going to get uh, weathered it's going to have highlights, lowlights, washes, filters, oil dots the whole lot so it is going to be modified anyway and you can see there the, w the way I'm painting so I break the airframe down into sections. So we started off with the upper left wing, then we did the tail, and then we did the fuselage going back to front, and then finishing off with the right wing, and then the undersurfaces. And I'm always looking at the airframe, so as I'm turning the model, 
If there's any areas that I think are a bit anemic, shall we say, I'll just go back in and uh, do a little bit of touching up and another coat, such as this bit on the fuselage here. And eventually we'll get a nice, solid, opaque uh, base coat ready for the next effects. And that paint handle, as you can see, is really useful. So just a little bit more paint required, just at the trailing edges there and around the roundels. Because there is a bit of white undercoat, obviously. So that is going to shift the colour. So we do need to be... Not make sure that's nice and opaque. And uh, nice and solid. There we go, base coat complete. Okay, RLM81. Again, this is MRP. The uh, the label got written off in a bit of spillage. Looking on the instructions and the actual photograph, which you can see on the on the introduction of this uh, of this video. Uh, you can see there is some touched up paint areas and it and it looks a little bit too dark to be the base colour, even though that did weather quite badly actually and, and fade quite significantly. So I just went in there freehand so to get a nice soft edge to do those sort of touched up paint areas. I don't don't know what that was from, I'm assuming battle damage. And now we're gonna go in and start fading the paint. So I've added some of the base RLMO2, so this will lighten and uh, sort of cool off the tone if you like. And I'm spraying it in the highlights, in the raised areas, that's going to add more of a 3D effect. And then along the panel lines and then in a cloudy pattern. And this all serves to break up that solid sort of single colour. What I try and aim to do is aim for, for too much contrast and the reason for that is is we are going to go back like I said earlier with lots of other effects which will tone it all down now for the red so the spinner had a white undercoat as you can see the back plate was actually in camouflage color so that's why I haven't painted that and again this is MRP if I can keep it in shot um, this is MRP Soviet FOD cover red which isn't too bright and it's a nice strong color and obviously we're going to go in with the rudder as well so this is the base color going down and then I did actually tint the uh, the color with a little bit of RLMO2 actually for a little bit of fading just so it wasn't too bright And that's the rudder all painted. And now it's time to remove the the masks. So this is the nerve wracking bit in the hope we haven't got any paint bleeding and it's all nice and sharp. And it's all looking good so far. In fact, it's all looking good. Just need to do that um, mass balance. Now for the markings, so using a circle cutter, I just cut out a circle just to avoid any overspray and I went in with the blue. Now I did assume that the Israelis would have used REF round or blue purely because when they left Palestine, they left a load of kit behind, including Spitfire spare parts, etc, which obviously the Israelis used to good effect. And I just assumed they would have left behind some paint. So that's why I went with that particular shade of blue. And then just to save on a bit of masking tape and to save a bit of time and effort, anything else, I'll just use the same, the same uh, piece. And now we can remove the tail striping as well. And you can see I've painted the fin tip red 
just to match the uh, match the rudder. So just zooming in there, you can see a slight mismatch on the forward stripe, just pointing it out with the tweezers. So we need to fix that. And that was really easy. Just a bit of masking tape and uh, went back in with the RLM81 and that was all fixed. And now for the, the really exciting bit is removing the national markings mask. And you can see the advantage by, by doing the white bit first and then the camouflage, there's zero chance of any sort of mishaps and any ghost seams, etc. Any misregisters. Using these tweezers, you've got to be very careful in removing the mask. It's all too easy to scratch the paintwork because they are very sharp. And especially here down the back where it's a little bit more fiddly. But unusually for me, I managed to remove all the masks without any damage and the need for going back in and repairing. So I was pleased with all that. Especially the little white spot, full stop there at the bottom. And now just the last bit, and we're done. And that is way better than using the decals. You can see there the mass balance has been painted in the camouflage colour, and the rudder is just a push fit. So that is the base coat complete, effectively. Now, as ever, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to polish the paint. You can get some ever so slight ridges from the masks. So using this extremely well-worn Mastercasters paint polisher I just go in and I just gently sand and you can see there a little bit of damage on the roundel but actually that adds to the weathering so may say gloss coat is unnecessary and I think to be perfectly honest I think it is unnecessary with these MRP paints if you've been polishing your paint in between the layers because they really are quite shiny but belt and braces I'm going to go in with the gloss coat which will seal everything in It'll make sure that all the markings match with the base coat and give a bit of a barrier. And I do find it easier to hide the carrier film if I sandwich it in between two layers of gloss. Deckling now, just the stencils to do. So just soaking the decal for a minute or so. And then I'm using Ammo of MIG setting solutions. So the sole goes on first. And then with these Edward decals, and these are the new Edward decals, the new, new Edward decals, is I just find it easier just to lift off the edge of the decal and then peel it off rather than trying to slide it off. The carrier film is, is actually really quite big on these, which is a bit, bit of an advantage because that makes it easier to peel it off when the time comes. And then apologies for this being out of shot, but... Quite a bit of manipulation on the walkways with the tweezers and then squeezing out the excess and just pushing it into the detail with some kitchen paper. And then there you can see that's it with just the microset on and some of the other stencils down the bottom. And they work brilliantly. In with the sole. Now this stuff is actually quite strong. Certainly stronger than Microsol. And that's going to make it more difficult to remove the carrier film. And in fact, I really struggled removing the carrier film. And I think purely because, A, they were snuggled right in there with that sole. Um, but also they're quite small. But you can see the effect there. That you can see the rivets through there. They work absolutely brilliantly. And that's just had a little, little gentle polish. And that's it. The base coat is complete. So coming up in part five, 
we're going to start the weathering. The first thing is going to be a sludge wash. So you can see I very carefully apply that. And all that gets removed with kitchen paper. We get a bit dotty with some Amov MIG oil brushes. And we do a bit of streakage underneath as well. And I think I'll probably end up finishing the project in the next one. So thank you very much for watching. Look out for that. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.